a huge disclaimer before we start this video everything that i'm going to be saying in this video are from my personal experiences you are not allowed to generalize my points to every church this is not an attack to the body of christ this is not an attack on the church this is not an attack to christianity i'm just sharing my personal opinions you know we are so fond of telling people that oh you need to speak up you know if you if you are not feeling comfortable in a place you need to leave if you are being um abused physically mentally emotionally you should leave a place but not a lot of people talk about the abuse that goes on in some churches hi guys welcome back again to my channel if this is your first time here yeah. hi i'm called flavin <laughs> and i'm an international student based here in belgium and on my channel i like to make immigration related kind of content i like to share information that can help other students like myself who have plans of moving abroad and studying in belgium i also like to make lifestyle content whereby i just show you guys how i'm navigating this country as a young girl in her 20s now today's video is a little bit controversial and i may step on a lot of necks some people are gonna get hurt so i apologize in advance if this video is going to be like a trigger or it's going to annoy you in any way i've been holding this thing in for many years okay and because it, don't, it no longer affects me that's why i can come out here and talk about it okay so please take every point that i state here like a pinch of salt let's just have a little backstory with my christianity and my journey with christ so growing up as a little child i used to attend Presbyterian church in cameroon and my grandmother was an elder in the church it was normal for me i was one of those children who will read the first lesson and the second lesson in church so growing up in the church learning how to pray my grandmother was the one who taught me all of those things we grew up in the church where you know we participated in a lot of things in the church now fast forward to me moving to a new city a new town and then i'm in a university now in my um city or in my building where i was living there was a pastor there a an assistant pastor or a small pastor to a big pastor was living in our compound and they will always try to you know want to invite me to their church and all of that i attended once and i'm like eh, this is not my vibe i'm not used to this vibe i'm used to the <laughs> Presbyterian church vibe i don't understood that yet and then i went to i think Dwala and i attended winner's chapel once and there i accepted christ into my life there's nothing like you give your life to christ you accept christ into your life so i accepted christ into my life but even though i did not still take the winner's chapel thing serious because mind you i was not used to the whole pentecostal way of going to church and all of that okay so i went back to boya and there was nothing really changed okay i was still just me until fast forward to when some things were not just going right in my life okay <laughs> my mother got me a new laptop she sent me this laptop and this laptop was stolen mind you this is a very expensive expensive laptop back then and that new laptop was stolen and a few like few weeks or it's one month later my new phone was stolen now this is something i want to point out here in africa we believe that every bad thing that is happening to you every wrong thing everything that is not right that is happening to you is because of an evil spirit it's because of your village people or something like that that was how i was thinking in my own head too so you always feel like it's happening because of this witchcraft or something something meanwhile it could just be that you're negligent or you're careless with your things okay i didn't see it that way in my head i saw it like because I, I started questioning myself like why is it that my own things are the only ones getting missing i just misplaced a new laptop now i've misplaced a phone things just get missing for me easily and i was just like you know what it's like the devil is after me that was how i ran to this uh, church which i'm not going to call the name and since we have a pastor that was living with us i called him i'm like some things are not just right he said come to church and that was how i went to church i explained everything to him he was like it's so good he's so happy at least now god has brought me to where i belong i've even forgotten how that conversation went but ladies and gentlemen that was how i joined that church when i started this church genuinely i was happy like everything was okay okay i was serving god genuinely from my heart everything was okay but then fast forward like after one or two or i think three years something was not just right with me okay and i'm going to go to the first point now which is you can't really question anything or ask why 
I don't know if that is something that happens in most of these churches, but you're not just allowed to ask why. You're not allowed to question why. Like, they just expect that they tell you this thing and you do it, or they just say, oh, and they like to hide under God said, hey, yo. They like to hide under the fact that God said you should do this. So, you can't even ask them that, why am I doing this? Or why are we doing this? You're just allowed, to, you're just... You're just expected to do as they want. And each time that you are one of those people that will have want to ask why or question, you're being termed rebellious and you're being termed not submissive. The next point that really didn't make sense to me is the fact that we are being expected to be in church almost all the time. Now, mind you, this town that we live in, which is Boya, it is filled with a lot of students, okay? Students come to Boya to attend the University of Boya. So a lot of people in that, our church, were students. I could literally count the older people in my church. So that church was filled with young, vibrant boys and girls. I was studying journalism and mass communication in school. So it made sense that, okay, you know what? The communication department will need me most or I can better serve the Lord in that department. And we have a program on Mondays whereby we film our past so it's always live on Facebook and on Wednesday we have Bible studies on Thursday we have what did they even have on Thursday was it Bible studies on Thursday something like that on Friday is prayer meetings Saturday is evangelism Sunday is the main service so the thing now is that I'm thinking as a student I have to go to school the reason why my parents sent me to Boya number one thing was to go to school if I decided that I wanted to serve the Lord that's still okay but then I don't have to serve the Lord at the detriment of not going to school and passing my exams we need to understand that you are expecting me to be in church all the time I also have a side hustle where I need to support myself so that I can have transport to come to church, so that I can have offering to give to church, so that I can have money when you people are telling me to sow a seed, so that I can have money so that when another sister or brother asks me, can you help me with this? I can be a helper to that person. The problem is not even being in church all the time. The problem is the fact that those of us who are not in church all the time have been looked like we are not serious you know they always preach things like you don't take the the work of god serious i see so many young people in my church who are supposed to be out hustling are in church 24 7. like what are you doing in church all the time i think that even god in heaven will want you to go and do something with your life that will benefit you you can be in church one or two times in a week which is okay you can still serve but the fact that you guys want this like i said there are many young people in my church so i will not understand why you as a young person who is either supposed to be in school or supposed to be hustling or looking for work or doing a business or something you are in church 247 how are you going to build your own life these are the things that i used to explain to them like uh -uh, i need to go to school so that i can come out and get a job i need to go out there and work you can you don't expect me to be in church all the time to do the lord's work i'm making the lord's work like this because most times it's not just about the lord's work it's just about doing other things that will grow the ministry which again like i said it is not wrong but if you have so many young people in your church you don't expect those people not to do other things that will help their lives okay we're going to sit in church the whole day how are we going to eat how are we going to pay our bills at the end of the month the next thing that used to ache me so much it's just that i just felt like we had so many young people in that church with no dreams and visions when i went to that church i realized that a lot of people came to that church as students and then we brainwashed into believing that serving god is you being in church all the time attending to to whatever whatsoever it is that your pastor says and all of that and a lot of them were school dropout a lot of them stopped going to school now i'm looking at a young man age 27 28 29 almost 30 you have nothing to show for you 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 are barely surviving to pay your rent you barely survive to feed yet you are in church 247 even god in heaven is looking at you and saying mumu because if you want god to help you i do believe that you need to go out there and try to hustle yourself out and then god will come in and bless you I, i'm not of that opinion that i have to be in church monday to sunday speaking in tongues 
before God will come and help me. I don't, I don't believe that. Me, it's just me. Maybe I'm not holier than thou. It's okay if you think that way. They'll always tell me in church that I've not gotten to that realm yet when nothing else matters. It's true. Nothing else matters. After we've gone to church Monday to Sunday, I will speak in tongues. I hope that we are going to eat those tongues when we are done. And nothing wrong with speaking in tongues. I hope that you guys are understanding the context from which I'm saying these points. It's the fact that you guys are not preoccupying yourselves with other things than to make it worst we live in a community in the church where nobody is getting to a particular stage all of us are just in one level living from hand to mouth i kid you not there's this the culture of begging in the church because nobody has a goal everybody believes that they are waiting for papa to speak a word into your life and nothing wrong again with your spiritual authority speaking a word into your life because i do believe that they work but if that is how you are going to live your life 24 7 seven days in a week 365 days in a year waiting for papa to speak a word into your life and you have no plans of helping yourself i'm sorry i cannot be like that i i, I can't be like that i equally believe that the church it was supposed to be one place where you felt safe you felt less judgment you know you are comfortable but why is it that the church was more like a court and a judgmental gathering if maybe i had to be in church on monday and i didn't go because maybe i had um school or maybe i wasn't feeling fine or something like that the judgment like, you could really feel the judgment when you go to church the next day it would just be like you're the worst sinner on earth like see you see me and my mental health i don't like anybody playing with it that, that thing used to really walk me up and then when you go now and they start giving you that attitude like you start feeling like you're the worst person they will even preach it on top of the altar like some of you don't just know what you're doing with your life instead of you coming to church you're going to walk instead of you coming to church you're going to school like hi god i will just sit there now condemning myself like maybe i've done the worst sin it's later i came to realize that what is all this even god in heaven is not planning for us like this why are you people making this christianity work very very difficult for some people and then the people who are in church 247 were considered the most righteous the most holier than thou that that was how it was working the next point which i know a lot of people are going to be mad at is the fact that i felt like everything turned into worshiping papa and mama i have nothing against you um respecting and honoring a spiritual authority that you feel that is impacting your life spiritually is helping your work with christ i don't i don't have any problem with that but when everything in church has to be changed in such a way that the only suit the interest of papa and mama uh -uh, counts me out okay counts me out the fact that even the way that we preached the preaching in church were always geared towards papa and mama it's like we are losing the main interest of why we are in church which is christ i did not come here to hear about papa and mama or what papa and mama did i'm here to talk i'm here to hear about christ and what he did for us and what he has what he has promised us i want to hear that i don't want to hear papa did this or mom i know one year ram all this uh, 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 drama that he, they do in church when papa is coming some people will be kneeling down some people will be laying on the floor i mean you guys see some of these things on social media what is all that drama for you know one of my pastors told me that because back then i used to have this my little businesses that i did because i had a lip set lip scrub and lip cream that you know people who suffer from dark chapped lips could use and then one of my pastors told me that I don't have sense. That's what he said. That I don't have sense. That I don't know that if I want this, my business to grow, I'm supposed to bring one of these to mama so that she can bless it. Although if you have like a, a, a back business, that do I not see that that girl that is selling bags, she brought one of her bags to mama and that's how her business is going to flourish. Please, I don't do that. That thing and idol worshiping, I don't see any difference with it. They will even go as far as telling you that your pastor should never call you and you don't pick no matter the circles so even if i'm i'm <laughs> i'm in a meeting or i'm somewhere i'm supposed to pick my pa even if i'm deep asleep i should wake up and pick my first my pastor's call and if my pastor tells me that flavin i want you here now whatsoever it is that i'm doing I'm not kidding you. These were things that were said to me. I'm supposed to leave what I'm doing and come and attend to what my pastor is saying. 
that some of us we don't just know what we want to do in this life we don't even know how to honor our our papas our papas that the pastor will even call you and you will miss his call ha chineke me if i'm in class and you are my pastor you're calling me i will not pick i will only pick after my class i'm sorry the next problem that I had with is sowing of seeds. Now, I am not against the aspect of sowing of seeds, especially when you are being allowed to do it voluntarily. If I want, if I feel led in my spirit to sow a seed, there is nothing wrong with that. If you feel led in your spirit to sow a seed, there is nothing wrong with that. But the fact that you have to coerce me, cajole me, give me reasons why I should sow a seed, I'm sorry. That's not Christ. I don't know anywhere in the Bible where it is stated that in order for me to be blessed, I need to sow a seed somewhere. I don't think so. Prove me if I'm wrong. And even if it is stated in the Bible, why is it that you guys have to use gimmicks in order for people to sow seeds? Why? The lies were too much. They will come and tell you, if you want to get to this level, sow a painful seed. Oh, naive Flavin back then. That's how I, I used to sow me, a student, living on monthly allowance. Hey, God. Money that I don't even have for one of those days. Okay, one of those days, like... God, I'm still, I just keep forgetting some points. My pastor's mentor came to church and he said, concerning this sowing of seeds, he said, sow a painful seed. The Lord is telling me that you should clear your accounts. And when you do this, he's taking you to the next level. Me, I had a jewelry business, ladies and gentlemen. I was, I was using it to, to help myself. I used to go to the neighboring town, buy jewelry in bulk, come and sell it to other students around me. This is me who I saved, like I think back then I saved like 70,000 francs each, if I'm not wrong, in my bank. That's how when they preach that preaching, I said, so a painful seed. He said, go and clean all your accounts. Ha! I went to my bank, carried all my little 70,000. Now you may say that 70,000 is not much, but for a student back then, that that was my money that was doing my business. I went and carried that money when I gave it in church. So now I do not even have capital to come and buy jewelries again. My aunt in Zola was calling me like, are you not coming this week? And because I used to go like every two weeks in to go buy jewelry. She was like, are you not coming this week and to buy jewelries? And I'll keep giving her excuses. And then the thing is that, it's better if I go to the bank and I, out of my own will, say that I want to use this money and sow a seed for my own reasons, okay? That's different. But the fact that you have to coerce, then they, told, they will now tell you that, oh, you need to do this so that you'll get to the next level. So I was now doing it with the idea that giving this seed, God is going to double it for me. In, in, fact, uh, in fact, it's like all of us were just going to church for the wrong reasons. The doctrines were just wrong. A lot of things were just wrong. A lot of things were just wrong. Why is it that you are giving a seed so that you have double? Why? Which kind of mindset, first of all, is that? See, just a lot. And that was how I gave that money. One week after, the double has not doubled. <laughs> Two weeks after, nothing has happened. Three weeks, months after. And I was just like, oh my God, who sent me? Who sent me? <laughs> Another thing that I didn't really like is the fact that when I looked at my pastor's mentors, I started doubting my pastor and I started doubting the whole community and the whole thing that I was into. You know, they always say that you should, we submit to our papa and then our papa submits to his own, to his own papa. Now, when I look at my papa's papa, <laughs> that is my pastor's mentors. Mm. Uh, God, <laughs> there was nothing good to write home about. Now, this is my papa's papa. You know, we used to go for camp meetings. We used to attend programs in their own church. Their own church was in Douala, yeah. And let me tell you guys something. Looking back, I don't know how before I didn't really see that something was wrong. We'll go to this church and this man will spend his whole time telling stories. I'm not even going to lie. Telling stories of how this is his spiritual son in this country gave him this amount of millions. How this is his own spiritual, this, this. How him and his mama, and this, this telling stories and then when he's done telling all those stories the next thing is sow this seed sow this seed so that this will and after that is the the, the the meeting is over what did i come to learn i did not come for you to tell me how many cars you have how many jets which business class plane that you enter to go to where i didn't come for that 
See, I'm really telling you that the, the Christianity in Africa has been so rubbished. And it's still being rubbished by some set of people. And if you don't call these people out, they are still going to be making a mockery of Christ. And I'm not going to be part of those people that is going to sit quiet again. And then there is this culture that when you give more to Christ, so um, when you just sit and go and give the pastor money, when you sow seats in church, when they are uh, um, when they are projects and you are giving the highest money, you are the one that is being considered like the most honored and lovable son. Since when did we turn the, the work of Christ and the work of God into a business? Because it just felt like everything was a business. The worst is that my pastor's mentors were... I would just call them business people at this point in time because I don't even understand. We were just going there to waste our time. The other annoying thing, oh God of Nazareth, that really made me to understand that these people is like you people are really out for business and for and for manipulation and keeping people in bondage is the fact that if you are in that church, it's very difficult for you to get married out of the church. <laughs> Listen to me. So there is this example of somebody in church who was very committed. She was an usher. She was very committed. She has been serving in the church for a long time. So this girl now had somebody who was in the Catholic church who wanted to get married to this sister. And the church denied. Not just the church. Our papa said, no, this girl cannot get married to this person. So you know that this girl now went ahead. She was like, mm -mm, I go marry him. So she went ahead to get married to this man. And we were not allowed to attend that wedding. Every time you bring somebody out of church to get married to you, there's always like the, like the person has to prove, like there's always this disagreement. And then when our papa's mentor came to our church, he, made, he stood on the other and said, that's why I don't allow my, my children to get married out of church because people go and bring somebody else with a different mentality. And then now I'll be trying to tell my daughter something. The husband will be trying to tell so they control you like they tell you they want to be the ones to tell you what to do one of our junior pastors once said told said something like there's a girl in europe that that even when the girl wants to go out of the house she has to dress and he has to approve of the dressing before that girl go hey god you are in europe <laughs> and somebody in Cameroon is to tell you if the dressing that you want to dress and go out is enough so if the girl wears something if it's not comfortable with the thing if he tells the girl that no this girl will go and change the dress out here treating adults as if they are babies <laughs> so this our papa's mentor said that's why he doesn't allow his children to get married out because because in his head if i as a girl i'm in his church he can easily control me. He can call me to do whatever he wants me to do for him, run his errands, do whatsoever, and I'll never disagree. But then if I bring in somebody now that is not part of his church, obviously the person will not understand because the person will be like, why is it that your pastor is calling you all the time to do things, do this? And if I actually get married to that person, obviously I'm supposed to listen to my husband first before any other person. Before any spiritual authority, I'm supposed to listen to my husband first. It's so sad that I see women who can never kneel down and call their husbands good names. Your husband is the head of the home. I know a lot of women that will respect their pastors as if they are, they are Jesus Christ, but will never give half of that respect to their husbands. And then the fact that we live in a suffering mindset in that church in such a way that my past you people why are you people blessing the wedding of two young people who have no goals imagine me in that church i drop out of the university i don't work anything i'm in church two four seven seven days a week and then you go and carry another brother who is in church like me doing nothing who is not working nothing nothing all they know how to do is speak in tongues in that same church coming to church every day like me no goals no plans nothing and then you want to you will tell me the lord has said this is your husband god forbid you have people are blessing wedding of what for what for these people is it's just giving birth to another generation of of suffering children and it was going on in my church a lot a lot of people getting married when they have no apartment oh lord they don't even have an apartment of themselves but you people are blessing their wedding you people are, what are you blessing and do you know that in so many the parents of these children are never in support of these things but once papa has said that yes 
these 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 members in church go ahead and get married even when their parents are not in acceptance of it all another thing that i still don't understand till date which is still going on i still hear some pastors saying it and it was also going on in my church is the fact that when somebody leaves the church automatically that person is an enemy to everybody in church listen i'm I, I don't i'm not doing that i'm sorry i'm not doing that imagine me knowing somebody for like 20 years or bonding with you knowing you out of church and then you come to church and then you see that this this atmosphere is not conducive for me and then you leave and then i'm expecting not expecting not to be talking with you or, or hanging out with you for what because you believe that they are going to corrupt my mindset so that i too will leave the church I'm not going to stop talking to my sister because she left church. And if you, if you people know some of the reasons why a lot of these people leave churches, it's ridiculous. You go and explain your issues to the pastor, the next thing they are using your issue and preaching the next day in church. Please don't get me started. And this whole aspect of cutting off, cutting off people when they are not in church, the highest of it all is the fact that so many students that were in that church their parents did not approve them of being in that church because a lot of parents came to realize that children are not going to school again i sent you in boya to go to school why are you not going to school god has called me that was the term how is god calling you stopping you from going to church because a lot of people were not going to, to school were not doing the things that they were supposed to be doing a lot of them dropped out they were not looking for work nothing they were in church so when their parents realized they were like uh -uh, something is not right you're not going to that church again because we want you to think about your future if that's how this church is going to make you then you're not going to the church again our pastor had a lot of issues like police were involved in some cases some people were wanted to get married and their parents say it's a lie some of them were locked up the christians are being programmed to understand that your family the devil is using your family not to allow you answer the call so a lot of people will cut their mothers off cut their fathers or cut their families off and they'll be sleeping in church because uh, if you're going to cut your parents off then you're going to start being alone if you're not going to go to school then your parents will not be sending you monthly allowance they will not be paying for your for your student room again since you want to claim that your papa is so right and your parents who gave birth to you have been nursing you all these years are not right okay now wish god said that you have to divide away from your family you can still serve god and do other things it doesn't mean that if God has called you, it means that you have to go and start sleeping in church 247. The thing is that at the end of the day, I was just tired of it all, okay? I was tired of the narcissism. Some of the prayer points did not just make sense to me. It's not me that will come and need, put my knees down and be praying, die by fire. Praying over my enemies. Like some of the things that my pastor will sit, stand on top of the altar and say, Hi God, I will just put my hand on my head. I'm like... Who sent me here? I just felt like I was in bondage. Like I was so being controlled. And the thing is that if you're even controlling me for the good things, it, makes, it did not even just make sense at all. To make matters worse. Because now I wasn't even understanding. And I, I, I started asking a lot of questions. Now I just started being by myself in church. Being laid back. Like if they say that they are doing something. I don't see that Christ is being glorified in whatever it is that they are doing. I don't do it evangelism became very annoying to me because you guys are not going out to preach christ you're going out to look for people to bring to your church the goal of it all wasn't even about christ again it was about growing the church for the papa so that he can stand and boast that he has 10,000 capacity church so the narcissism the pretense the control and everything was just getting to my neck and then one day my my pastor stood in front of the church i was preaching about people who have not even arrived anywhere they think that they've arrived that you've not even arrived anywhere you're already carrying your shoulders imagine that when you will now arrive and then he 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 called my name oh i children of god he said i'm talking to you flavin if you don't change your ways the lord would huh yo after that Sunday, I said it don't end. And that was how I left. I just feel like African churches is just too much at this point in time, okay? You guys are making it so difficult for people to serve the Lord. You have turned the church into your business, your personal businesses, and you need to stop. If you go to a church and Christ is not the center, Christ is not being preached, leave. Anyway.
anyway that's all for the video let me know your experiences that you've had in african churches like i said this is not how all african churches or all churches are like i'm giving my personal experiences in this one particular church i know of so many pastors that preach christ who don't make tithing salt scene and they've not carried mammon on their head okay they've not they've not changed they are not separating people from their families they are not expecting you to not have dreams just because god has called you they are not using tricks and gimmicks to lure you into their churches to grow their numbers i'm not saying that every church is like that okay this is my personal experience and i know you're going to say flavin so you were very dumb thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video share your experiences with me down in the comment section if you disagree with me it's okay peacefully disagree with me in the comment section please before we go don't forget to hit on the red subscribe button like comment share and all that good stuff and i'm going to see you in my next video Bye!